Congratulations on your purchase of your new Universal Boat Class Jet Dock Drive-On Docking System. It is important to note that the assembly of a Universal system as demonstrated in this video is very similar to the assembly of an economy system. Note that the drive-on portion of this dock consists of three pieces. The actual number of drive-on pieces and their corresponding size is dependent upon the size of the craft intended to be dry docked. Use the following instructions to assemble your system. Determine where your system is to be installed and locate a nearby flat unobstructed concrete area, preferably a boat ramp, where the pieces can be situated as indicated and connected together. Pay careful attention to the reference medallions. They must be oriented in the same direction. Notice that we have removed the connecting pins and fasteners which were attached to the dock for shipping purposes and placed them in a safe area. Begin by pivoting the middle section into the bow section on the port side. Be certain to maintain proper tab stacking sequence. Secure the tabs with a fastener and tighten. Position yourself on the bow starboard corner of the middle section and pivot the middle section into the bow section, being certain to maintain proper tab stacking sequence. Insert spacers for missing tabs within the sequence. Once the system is in this configuration, place the handle of the assembly key into the second pin opening from the port side and pry the dock sections together so that a connecting pin can be inserted into the first pin opening from the port side. Use the assembly key to lock the connecting pin by rotating it one eighth of a turn. The pin's reference medallion should be oriented the same as the reference medallions on the adjacent cubes. Proceed to insert the remaining connecting pins using the same technique, always using the assembly key to assist with the alignment of the tabs. Work your way from port to starboard in a zipper-like fashion. Secure the three remaining tab locations with fasteners and tighten, being certain to insert spacers for missing tabs within a given sequence. Proceed with the connection of any additional middle or M40 sections to the bowward sections using the same technique. The inner and outer bunk systems must now be installed. It is important to note that these systems can only be installed on universal boat docks. Determine whether your dock is provided with these systems by reviewing the provided assembly plans. Proceed by placing the stern section onto the forward section of the dock to assist in connecting the inner bunk system hardware. Connect the angled end of the interior bunks to the stern section using the provided hardware as directed by the installation instructions provided with your dock. With both bunks secured to the stern section, position the stern for attachment to the bowward sections. Attach the stern section following the same procedures previously demonstrated. Once the stern has been connected to the bowward sections, complete the forward attachment of the inner bunks using the provided hardware. If your drive-on docking system is provided with an outer bunk system, it is recommended that you install the system after your dock has been splashed and the buoyancy beam or beams have been installed. For the sake of demonstration, the outer bunk system will now be installed. Attach the outer bunk system using the provided hardware, as directed by the installation instructions and assembly plans provided with your dock. The winch assist launch system must now be installed as directed in the assembly plans provided with your dock. Begin by securing the looped end of the bungee cord to the shaft of the indicated starboard bow connecting pin. Insert and lock the pin. Secure the deck pulley to the starboard section of the dock by removing the indicated connecting pin, passing the knotted end of the line down through the four tabs, securing the knot beneath tab four, and inserting and locking the pin. Be absolutely certain that the knot is secured below tab 4 and that the line is pinched between the pin shaft and the tabs. The winch assist launch system must be pre-calibrated by positioning the winch hook at the estimated location of the craft's bow eye when the craft is in the proper overnight storage position. This position can be estimated as the second seam sternward from the winch. Pass the loose end of the line through the deck pulley and then through the winch hook. Proceed to the port side of the dock and draw the line tight to remove the slack in the system. 
tension the line further in order to stretch the bungee and move the stainless steel ring towards the deck pulley approximately two cube lengths. While placing your foot on the line to maintain tension in the system, remove the port connecting pin opposite the deck pulley. Tie a large knot in the red winch assist launch line in a position on the line where the tension will remain in the system. Pass the knot and the remaining line down through the four tabs, securing the knot beneath tab four and inserting and locking the pin. Be absolutely certain that the knot is secured below tab four and that the line is pinched between the pin shaft and the tabs. Final winch assist launch system adjustments, if necessary, are made by adjusting the length of the line and or the position of one or more of the system's mounting locations. Your jet dock is now ready to be launched. Secure a minimum of two safety lines to the dock and be certain the winch handle is located over the dock surface to prevent damage. Be extremely cautious when launching a system with a winch turret to prevent it from striking any object during the launch and to also prevent any cubes from being perforated on a sharp seawall or deck mounted cleat. With the assistance of a helper, launch the system and temporarily tie it up in the location where it is to be moored. Install a buoyancy beam or beams if provided. The number of beams is dependent upon your craft's size. Attach the buoyancy beam mounting hardware to the beam as directed in the assembly plans provided with your dock. Secure a line to the beam and before easing it into the water, remove the nuts and washers from both hardware sets. Gently ease the beam into the water and temporarily tie it off to the dock. It is the intention to completely fill the beam cubes with water so that the beam can be easily installed beneath the dock. Tilt the beam to allow water to enter the bottom hole on each cube and air to vent from the top hole. Position the beam beneath the dock by first turning the beam so that the patterned surface is facing upward and the drilled holes are facing sternward. Pass the beam hand over hand beneath the dock in the location directed by the assembly plans. Rotate the beam so that its patterned surface faces sternward and the holes are now facing the seafloor. Secure the beam to the dock with the washers and nuts as directed by the installation instructions. Install all remaining beams in a similar fashion. It is not recommended unless specifically noted on your assembly plans to add any buoyancy to the beams until the craft has been placed onto the dock to verify that additional buoyancy is required. Your jet dock is almost ready for use. Proceed to the mooring section of this video to properly moor your system. Once your system has been moored properly, proceed to the proper use and maintenance section of this video. In the event that the stern of your craft or the stern upper surface of the dock are in contact with the water, some fine tuning may be required in the form of adding additional buoyancy to the buoyancy beam cubes while they are in place. Buoyancy, if required, may be added to the buoyancy beam, increasing the overall lift capacity of your jet dock. It is recommended to add only small amounts of buoyancy at a time to prevent overinflating the stern of the dock, making drive on and launch difficult. Using an air pump and hose attachment, air may be introduced back into selected beam cubes while the cubes are in place. Insert one end of the hose in either hole on the beam cube and add air. Seal all beam cubes where air has been added with baler plugs to ensure that buoyancy is retained over time. Seal all buoyancy beam cubes whenever there is a possibility that the dock may rest on the seafloor. 